Assalamu alaikum everyone and today we are going to be talking about complex numbers. pretty much wrapped up all of the things we needed to learn in algebra we've completed the basics we've done a lot of other calculations in algebra 2 now we have to look forward to trigonometry and calculus don't worry, don't worry, we have a lot of time before that. Of course, I do have trigonometry videos already in my channel. Here's a playlist of those. So after these few videos, we are go you can go ahead to the trigonometry series. So what are these concepts that we need to learn before trigonometry and calculus? Well, the first one of these concepts is complex numbers. We know that there are two types of numbers. Real, the ones that are rational sometimes, irrational, like the ones given here. And then there are imaginary numbers. These are the square roots of numbers that are negative. Now, these are imaginary because no number can really square to give a negative number. Not even negative numbers because if you multiply a negative number by a negative number, then you get a positive number. So if you multiply that negative number by itself, it's basically its positive counterpart. So. You can't have negative answers for squares, but in imaginary numbers, we pretend they do. Now, i, which is equals to the square root of negative one, is the simplest imaginary number, but there are other expressions of i, and some of these expressions are real numbers. So let's look at the simplest one, i, is equals to square root of negative 1. I squared is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which is equals to negative 1. I cubed is basically I squared times I, which if you do the arithmetic, it's negative I. And I to the fourth, which is basically 2 times negative 1, is 1. Now this set of number repeats. So if you look at i to the 5th to i to the 8th, if you do the arithmetic, you get the same number. We can also find i in other numbers. Say square root of negative 9. Now if you break this down, it's basically square root of 9 times the square root of i, which is 3i. A complex number has two parts a real part and an imaginary number which is expressed as a plus b i all numbers are complex in this sense because b just has to be zero for rational and irrational numbers to be the answer and if a is zero then you will get imaginary answers complex number in standard form is when a is not equal to zero and b is not equal to zero we can do many operations this is similar to algebra where say you have an equation 2 plus x plus 3 minus 2x is equals to 5x we can we know this because we just multiply the 2 and 3 and we put and we also add up the x so simple by adding binomials imaginary numbers work the same way if you just take out x and give i then you will get the same answer since we already know how to do it 
a hundred times we don't need to practice multiplication and division work the same way but we we have a twist we need to keep in mind that i squared is equals to negative one why let's see we are very familiar with multiplying binomial we use the foil method to do it so let's foil 2 minus quantity 2 minus i times quantity 4 plus 2i now foil stands for first outer inner last so the first is 2 times 4 that's 8 inner negative i times 4 that's minus 4i outer 2 times 2i which is 4i last is negative i plus 2i so that's negative 2i squared if we look at what we've got we can cancel out the minus 4i and plus 4i and instead of negative 2i squared we know that i squared is equals to negative 1 so this becomes negative 2 times negative 1 which is equals to positive 1 so we have 8 plus 2 which is equals to 10 yes complex numbers can multiply to give real numbers now division works a little bit like multiplication say we have 5 plus 2i over 3 minus i if we had a real number in the denominator then we could do something because we really have nothing to work with here so we can multiply this by something but what do we multiply it by this is where i introduce complex conjugates complex conjugates are basically the same equation but with the operation reversed now multiplying by the complex conjugate gives the real number so for so what complex conjugate of course the denominators so 3 plus i over 3 plus i again this is equals to 1 so we're not really changing the answer so now we have two multiplications so we do what we did last time just foil just on both sides first here there is 5 plus 2i times 3 plus i which is 15 plus 5i plus 6i plus 2i and that is equals to 13 plus i and here we have 3 minus i quantity 3 minus i plus and times 3 plus i and this time foiling gives us 9 plus 3i minus 3i plus 1 which is 10 so we have 13 plus i 11i over 10 or in standard form 13 over 10 plus 11 over 10i or 11i over 10 now this might not exactly be neat but this is the final answer now we learned how to use complex numbers but what do we use it for how do we utilize complex numbers one of it is that remember the quadratic formula we used to use here we said that if b squared minus 4ac well had a negative answer the thing was unsolvable now it isn't exactly unsolvable now we know complex numbers it is imaginary the answer is imaginary there is also this that an nth degree polynomial will always have n number of factors some may be similar some may be real or imaginary not just complex meaning that a binomial will have two factors a trinomial will have three factors and etc etc this is called the linear factorization 
Ferro. So that's all there is to it. Thank you for watching. If you want more videos about math and science, please make sure to like, co comment down below if I missed anything or if you are confused about something or if you just need any help. Please make sure to know. let me know in the comment section down below. Please subscribe and thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!